Today we have another mini Hi-Fi amplifier. This is the Fossey Audio BT20A Pro. At the time of recording, Fossey plans to run a sale on these, and they're also going to be doing a giveaway details later on in the video. Inside of the box, you will find a manual of power supply and the amp itself. I like the look of the amp, especially this copper colored volume knob. The bass and treble controls have an indent at the midpoint so that you can easily set these to flat. I'm not a fan of the tiny power switch but that doesn't really matter this is the type of amplifier that you're just going to turn on and then connect to the bluetooth whenever you want to play some music on the back this is all fairly standard stuff for this kind of small compact amplifier you've got a pair of rca inputs there is a preamp output i like to see that with the preamp output, you can easily add a powered subwoofer if you need a little more bass. Looking at the input for the power supply, 24 to 48 volts DC. The power supply itself is five amps and 32 volts. A bigger power supply means more power. You can go out and buy a bigger power supply if you want, but honestly, it's not worth the extra cash to add an additional power supply when you've already got a perfectly fine one with the amplifier. So how much power can this amplifier make? Well, five times 32 is 160, and of course, some of that power gets burned off as heat. So if this thing is 75% efficient, then we should expect this to give us about 60 watts per channel. On the back, we can see the speaker connections are very close together. The best way to connect to these is with some banana plugs. I'll make sure to give you a link to some banana plugs and the amp down in the video description. To test this thing out, I'm gonna hook up both channels to four ohm resistors and measure the power in watts using this handheld amp dyno and distortion detector. Cranking up the volume, we get 26 watts at full volume with no distortion. So it didn't hit anywhere near its 60 watts I was estimating. Let's talk about why. I've actually had this issue before. It's my telephone. I'm using a USB-C to audio adapter and then plugging the phone into some RCA inputs. The phone just doesn't have enough voltage in order to drive the amp to its full potential. But if you think about it, no one's gonna hook RCAs up to one of these amplifiers through their telephone. This is a Bluetooth amp you're going to use the bluetooth so let's connect to the bluetooth and see what happens the bluetooth connected flawlessly the power led on the front switched from red to blue when the bluetooth was connected so let's try it again we're going to look at the red device on your left when it lights up we have one percent total harmonic distortion That happens at about 73 watts, which is a bit more than the 60 watts that I was estimating earlier. That's a good thing. Let's turn this thing up until it clips and <laughs> It didn't clip, instead it shut down. It appears to have gone into protect mode at 78 watts. All right, what is up with that? The thing you have to keep in mind is that amplifiers of all types are designed to be used with speakers, not resistors. Hooking up an amplifier to a resistor is really hard on the amplifier. Now I reached out to the marketing contact at Fossey that sent me the amplifier to find out if the amp had some kind of built-in circuitry protection and the marketing person couldn't confirm it. They don't seem to know much about their amplifiers. But the amp appears to have shut down, gone into protect mode and reset itself automatically. And afterwards it worked just fine. Just for kicks and giggles, I triggered it a few more times with no issue at all. Each time it seemed to reset itself and continue on without any problems. Next thing I want to do is test the frequency response of the amplifier. So I'm going to play some pink noise and connect my RTA up to the amplifier. You'll notice right here the RTA is picking up some low frequencies. This does it even if nothing's connected. So I've got some troubleshooting to do with my RTA setup, but I can confirm that it's not coming from the amplifier. When we turn the amp up, we get a nice flat and even response which is exactly what you want. All right, how does it sound? I'm gonna be testing out using these speakers here. These are the Dynas, and I'm gonna be playing one of the tracks that I frequently use in my videos as background music. Hang tight a little bit. I'll give you some more information on these speakers in just a second. Now, I don't claim to have a golden ear, but the amp sounds just fine to me. A lot of these small amps can be kind of dirty and it will come through when you're playing it. Now, after listening to it for a few minutes, I reviewed the footage while I was editing and it seemed that my microphone wasn't able to accurately pick up the low frequency. So what you're hearing is not an accurate representation of what I heard when I played these out in the shop. Let's crack it open and look at the guts.
All right, so I can't get it apart any further without unhooking the speaker wires, and I don't want to go through the trouble to do that. But I do want to show you this. If you look in the manual, Fossey actually gives instructions for upgrading the amp by replacing these two chips right here. That's a cool feature, but honestly, I'm not sure if it's worth the trouble. To learn more about these cool DIY speakers right here, click this video right now. To catch the next video, click here and subscribe to the channel. For more information about the giveaway that Fossey Audio is running, check down in the video description. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will catch you on the next one.